Hello, everyone. I'm going to speak in English just because I think you'll understand me better and I'll go quicker. Um, so, I just wanted to share a few testimonies on all the things that happened in Ukraine. I went there for a month. Uh, we went to a few different villages. Um, and then just thinking of today, it was a perfect day for me to come and share my testimony on missions because the theme of today's service is children and that's exactly what we did in Ukraine. Um, we prayed for children too. And when I was sitting there, sitting there, that made me think of the story of Hannah in Samuel. Hannah prayed for a child and she promised God that she would dedicate that child to God, that he would serve God all the days of his life. And look who Samuel became. He became a priest and a great prophet in Israel. And in Psalm 139, it talks about that God has created every child. He knows the days he's ordained for their lives. Their entire life is planned out by God from the beginning, even before they're born. And so for every single child, every single youth member and adult, God already has a plan for you, but are you living in it? Are you living out the call and the gifting that he's given you because every single one of you has a call, every single one of you has a gift. For some it may be to be a teacher, it may be to be a prophet, to be an evangelist, to be a missionary, but every single one of you has a gift. And so I just want to say thank you so much for supporting the missionary trip to Ukraine because we worked a lot with kids and the work that I did, all the blessing and all that came throughout that is to you and to the church that supported my mission trip. Um, just a fun fact, I think I came from the smallest church of um, my missionary group. There was eight of us that went. I think I came from the smallest church but I'm pretty sure that my church was the only one that fully funded my missionary trip of everybody in my group. So that's just a testimony of how wonderful God is. So thank you and praise the Lord. Um, during my time in Ukraine, we visited six villages. We went to four to five different churches that we led or participated in. We had three different Christmas programs for the kids. We gifted 1,300 presents or gifts, so 1,300 different presents, gifts, and we also took um, eight suitcases of presents with us from America there as well. And we also organized and led a teenager's discipleship school while we were in Ukraine. So the first picture is our, our team. The next picture, um, we went to a house church in Ukraine. There was a few different ones that we visited, and this one was just a few people, maybe 10, maybe 10 adults and some kids. And what really stood out to me was to see God moving in Ukraine in a church of 10 people, but yet God is still moving here in America with churches of 50 people, 100 people, 1,000, 5,000 people. Um, at, that, at that church service, afterwards we'd stay to fellowship and just encourage the people and um, Nina, she's, you can go back. Nina's in the corner. I don't know if you see her. And there's a babushka with a white hat on. That grandma came to church for the first time in her life. And Nina was talking with her and fellowshipping with her. And this, this grandma decided to give her life to Jesus. And so that was, oh, it was amazing. Slava Um The next picture is one of the salos that we went to visit. It's called Galubovka. And this is how we would lead our Christmas programs. So we'd sit all the kids as tightly fit as we could. There's probably at least 50 kids there. And then in the front, we would do our Christmas program. So for two hours, we would just have games. We'd have prizes for the kids, like popcorn, hot chocolate, just to make it fun and enjoyable because we went to a really poor, a very poor part of Ukraine. So for the kids, that was probably the best time that they're gonna have this year. So it was amazing to do that. We would have um, a skit. We would put on like a Christmas skit for like 15, 20 minutes. And then we would have like a short word. Um, you can go next picture. That's one of the kids getting a prize. I don't know how well you can see it, but he was so excited when he was ripping it open. And it's something small, like here we'll play Monopoly. We're like, okay, yeah. But for them, it's a treasure, like a treasure, a little gift like that. Um, the next picture is we went to a salon called Yurivka. And 
there was a lot of kids, there was even more kids that came to that place. And these kids are from unchristian families, so they get to have a time of fellowship with Christian people that love them, that care about them. And at, at the end of the program, um, we stayed for a few hours to hang out and talk with them, and they loved it so much. And they they literally beg you to come back again next year, but you can't just say yes right away because Ukraine's really far away. So you can't promise anything, but they they really enjoy it and they really want you to come back and do that. Um, of the adults, because some parents would come with their kids and stay there during the program, one of the adults came t up to one of our missionary, one of our Bible school students, and he was like, talk to me, like, I want to have what you have. Like, what is it that you guys have? Because I want it. They see, they see just the love and the joy that we have that you walk with something different than the rest of the world, and people, people want that from you. And so he stayed with one of, one of our missionaries, and he talked to him for a bit, just asking questions. How do I get that relationship with God? How do I get that joy that you have, and just that peace that you walk with? Um, and also, afterwards, when we were eating, one of, our, one of our guys, Joey, he's only 19 years old, he went to Bible school. He's only 19 years old. He got up to wash his hands before he went to go eat, and he n noticed two grandmas sitting on the couch in the kitchen, and they were crying. And so he walked up to them, and he's like, you know, what, what's wrong? Uh, both of them had a fever. One was really hot, but one was really cold, and they were both shaking. Like they were in so much pain, and they were crying. And he said, let me pray for you. And so he put his hands on them, he prayed for them, and during that time, they felt their body just like heat go from their head to their toes. And when he finished praying, they were completely healed. Everything was gone, and they were completely like better. And afterwards, they got up to like work in the kitchen and do stuff. So, again, like even miracles were happening, and it's so cool to be a part of it. Um, you can go next. Um, that's some of the kids getting their presents that we bought in Ukraine. You can go next one also. So we bought 1,300 of these gifts that we um, handed out to all the kids. Um, also during this time, we'd also evangelize in the streets. Um, in the Solo, you would walk from your, your apartment to like the store, and you would meet like a babushka or somebody walking, and you'd kind of just like talk to them. And the thing is, in Ukraine, people are not very open to, to the gospel or to hear about God. A lot of people are orthodox, so they already know about God. And so that's why there's this big push to work with kids, because kids are the new generation. Even in our church, um, we learned about it in Bible school that a majority of kids make their decision to follow Christ before 14, before 14 years old. And that decision impacts them for the rest of the, their lives. And the Bible even says, train up your child in the way he should go while he is young. And when he is older, he will not depart from it. And so that's the big push that like, even like in our churches in Ukraine, that's why it's so important to work with the kids and get them like a foundation going in who they are in God. That way when they're older, they're not going to walk away from that. Um, the last week in Ukraine, you can go to the next picture, we had a, we as our missionary group put on a teens discipleship school. So there were teenagers between like um, 12 and 16 years old. They came from Christian families um, and they came from different places, different parts of Ukraine to this discipleship school. It was four days long. It was over 40 teenagers and like over 10 adults came to help. Um, in different different aspects. So during that school, all of our missionaries, um, we led lessons, pretty much teaching the kids. These kids are already um, like new believers, or they believe in God, but they have a very like um, small relationship with God. They don't have years of being in a Christian family like we do. And so our our theme for the school was to go deeper in your relationship with God. So we led lessons on um, your identity in Christ, who you are in God, 
We talked about the promises of God so that they would know what promises they have from God to pray over them, to know them, to read the Bible. Um, we taught them what it is to have a prayer life and how to pray. Also, we led, it's called an inner healing seminar. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it. Um, it's something we went through in Bible school. We had counselors come. Um, Paul Musachuk, he's, he's Russian, he lives in Florida. His brother Alex Musachuk lives in Missouri. But he, Paul and his wife came and led an inner healing seminar for us in Bible school, and it goes over five different topics. Um, it's family wounds, relationships, forgiveness, unforgiveness, addictions, and sexual sins. And basically, you have a seminar for like 30 minutes, and then you do like 20 minutes of prayer. And during, during prayer, um, you can go confess or, or repent or just to be prayed for. And there's a lot of like inner healing things inside that, that you're freed from. And so that was also a big, um, big part of our discipleship school. And I can't tell you how many, how many teenagers were transformed by this school. So many of them received forgiveness and were able to forgive other people that hurt them. Sometimes you hear stories about people's lives that are hard to believe. There was one girl that was talking about how she grew up in an unchristian family. Her dad would beat her mom so bad and then throw her outside into the snow and just leave her there. And somebody came and saved her mom. And all these stories about her life, all the things that happened to her, all the things that she went through. And I remember sitting there and thinking, I'm like, is this real life? You hear about these kind of stories and you don't think they're real, but then you have a testimony of somebody sitting in front of you talking about all the things that they've gone through in their life. And you, they need God so much, so much. And so through this seminar, people were able to forgive and just to receive healing inside and to realize how much God loves them and how much he cares about them. And basically just to like bring some life and some, some hope ooh, into their lives. And after, after the school, we have a chat on Viber. And the leaders and the people that came with the kids were sending testimonies upon testimonies of how the kids came into the discipleship school in one way. But when they, were le when they left, they were completely different. Just the way they acted, the way they were talking. Um, even today on Viber, um, I got the, the list of testimonies that all 40-something kids listed. And... It's just amazing how much, how something like so little, it seems so little, changed them so much. And when we think about missions, missions isn't our idea. It's not something that we decide, hey, I'm gonna go on a missionary trip. Missions was always God's idea. He says in Mark, he says, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. That's a command of God. He doesn't, he doesn't say, if you want to. If you decide to, he says, go. Because the world is desperate for missionaries. The world is desperate, even the kids in Ukraine, to have some life, some hope, people that love them, that can show them what Jesus is like. That's what the world needs. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. The problem has never been the harvest. People are ready. People are all out there. They're waiting for hope. They're waiting to hear about Jesus. But it's the laborers that are lacking. That's who's lacking. And I'm so grateful that we have a missionary group in our church to be able to send people on missions, to support people on missions. And sometimes life gets so busy that even we as Christians forget what we have in, in, in Christ. Honestly, even earlier this week, I was at home, and I just went through Bible school. I just came back from missions, and I was praying, and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm like, sometimes it's so hard to think of what was like before and what life is like with you, because I grew up in a Christian family. Yeah, there came a, there came a day when I decided to follow you, but sometimes I forget what that difference is. And I remember I went into prayer, and I just started praying, and I felt God speak to me. And I was crying, and I was just like, like just so overwhelmed and but I had all this peace and all this happiness inside remember God speaking to me in that moment he said but you never had this this is what you have in me I love you I accept you I've forgiven you I've given you everything you need in life 
But go out and give other people that too because people are desperate for it. People need that. And so some of us can't always go on missions. We have families, we have work, and we have all these other things. But what you can do is you can support missions. You can pray for the people that go on missions. I had people praying for me from this church when I was in Ukraine. But you can also support the people that go on missions. You can support a missionary group that sends people like me on missions and sends other people on missions to do God's work. I never understood this until Ukraine. All, all the things that happened in Ukraine, all the testimonies, all the blessings, they're not going to go to me, but they're going to go to you. The woman that repented, the teenagers that, whose lives were changed, that blessing goes on you because you support that. And so even today, as we prepare to give to our missionary, missionary fund, I just pray that we'd have a greater desire to support this fund. Because we're not giving to the church, we're not giving to our missionary organization or to a person, but we're investing into God's kingdom. God is working, God is moving. Are you gonna step into that and say, God, I'm gonna support that? Because we invest into the heavenly when we support missions, because this is God's work that he's doing. So today, I just pray that we give joyfully. You give out of your heart of love for Christ, that it's not something you're holding on to, but you give joyfully to God, because more than anything, he wants your heart to be full of joy when you give. Be blessed by it. Thank you so much.